السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household without exception all his companions may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless every single one of us my brothers and sisters many times we lose hope because we find ourselves going very far from the straight path we find ourselves for a long period of time not having done exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to do so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us good news so many times in the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he is most forgiving most merciful in fact before we even start reading the Quran we are taught to say the name of Allah and he has chosen that when we say his name, the best qualities that you say with it is most forgiving, most merciful, or the beneficent, the merciful. Listen to this. Bismillahi, and then what do we say? Ar Rahman ar Rahim. Bismillahi ar Rahman ar Rahim. That is the Sunnah, that is the way of the Prophet. ﷺ. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful the most beneficent, etc, etc. These qualities that depict or show the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, verse number 49 of Surah Al-Hijr, Tell my worshippers that I am indeed the most forgiving, most merciful. Amazing. Look at that. My brothers and sisters, we should be turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what you have done, for as long as you are breathing, for as long as you are alive, there is hope. You need to seek the forgiveness of Allah. There is no sin that is too big for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive if you repent from it, including shirk, including association of partnership with Allah. The only time Allah does not forgive shirk is if you die without having sought forgiveness from it, then he says, I'm not going to forgive that. It's up to him, obviously, and he has chosen that. But if you were to seek forgiveness from that before you died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you anytime. And he always says this and he repeats it. He repeats it often in the Quran. But we have one problem. The problem with mankind is when he is constantly told about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is told every day Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim, Allah is merciful, Allah will forgive you. Sometimes shaitan seizes the opportunity to whisper into the ears of mankind and to say Allah is forgiving. Don't worry. Don't need to worry. You can go to the club, sort yourself out. You can now go to gamble just once. You can go commit adultery. Never mind this pornography, etc., etc. Shaitan comes and whispers and makes man think, you know what? I'm a Muslim. I'm okay. There's hope for me. And inshallah, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us the very next verse because he knows man needs the balance. You need the balance. You know, when you write a mathematics test, you don't only write a test whereby they are testing you on addition. They will test you on addition. They will test you on subtraction. They will test you on multiplication. They will test you on division. And they will test you on so many other aspects of mathematics because they want to know, are you really a person who's a genuine mathematician? When you're a mu'min, Allah says, we will test you. We will test you by giving you. We will test you by taking away from you. We will test you by multiplying. And we will test you by completely reducing you into absolutely nothing besides the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Allah's way. It's Allah's plan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you to do certain things and he will ask you to stay away from certain things. If Allah wanted, he could have just told us, go onto the earth and do as I say. And there is nothing prohibited, nothing you need to stay away from. But I just want you to fulfill salah and to do this and to do that. Subhanallah, Allah wanted certain things to be prohibited. This is why from the very beginning, he told Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, do what you want in this place. But there is one fruit, I don't want you to eat it. It was Allah's planning, divine wisdom and reasoning. Allah knows that. So Allah says in verse number 50, As much as you should know that I am most forgiving, most merciful, you also need to know that my punishment is very, very painful. Allahu Akbar. 
My punishment is that which is very, very painful. So my brothers and sisters, in this way, we are taught to strike the balance. And we are taught really to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it is too late. Brothers and sisters, another problem we face as human beings, we will always have certain squabbles between us, within the family, within the community, within the broader society, etc. People we know, people we don't know. They will always say certain things we don't like. That's also part of the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. You can never ever have everyone think good about you. They have to be people who don't think good about you. Some of them without even knowing you. Sometimes the bulk of them without knowing you. They might have heard something. They probably don't understand a thing or two. And they just don't like you before they've even seen you or spoken to you. There's nothing much you're going to do about that because you don't even know them at times. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you something to save yourself from depression, to save yourself from anxiety, to save yourself from the stress, to save yourself from the sickness that one would feel when so many people are saying so many bad things about you and you know it's not true. You know, if someone is spreading rumor about you and it is true, you need to be slightly worried because you need to improve yourself. But when people are spreading rumor about you and in order to drop you, defame you or to hurt you or harm you, they have to lie about you. You need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, they found nothing in what I've done. So now they have resorted to telling a lie in order to drop me. This is a sign of success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when this happened to him. There was nothing wrong with him. He was perfect, completely perfect. Like we say every day, the best of creation, the most noble of prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet, do you know what they did? They used to say, he's a madman, he's a magician, he's a this, he's a that, he's after money, he's after power, he's after women, he's this, he's that, etc., etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 97 of Surah Al-Hijr, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ And indeed we know that your chest is tightening because of what they are saying. It's affecting you in the sense that you desperately want to see them guided and they, neither are they being guided nor are they saying anything good. On top of being misguided, they are actually speaking evil about you. So it hurts. One might ask, why would it hurt the Prophet ﷺ? It never ever hurt him because of himself. His reputation was intact. In fact, the verse just before these verses, before verse number 97, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regarding the people who used to mock at him, they used to make a joke of him, they used to try and swear, they used to try and say dirty, derogatory things. Allah says, Inna kafayna kal O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have protected you from the harm of those who are trying to scoff or mock or joke. Your reputation, your status, your dignity is absolutely intact. It will not be affected at all, no matter what they do. Nothing. Your status is very high. Tell me. So many people have drawn cartoons, so many people have made videos, so many people have said bad things. Has it ever resulted in the dropping of the status of the greatest of man, of the greatest of creation? If anything, more and more people are turning to Islam every time someone tries to do something bad. That is a miracle given to Muhammad Every cartoon they made as a result of it, hundreds of thousands have entered the fold of Islam. When they realize this man is not what they are saying. Every time they lied about him, more and more people turned towards the deen. That is a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us too. So Allah tells him, you don't worry about people mocking. We have already protected your reputation. Come what may, they cannot harm your reputation. It is absolutely intact. Those who are trying to mock, we have protected you from that completely. Thereafter, Allah says, we know that your chest is tightening because of their statements. You know, if you go into medicine, you can speak for hours on end on this. What is the tightening of a chest? Sometimes due to stress, we have angina attacks. Sometimes we have heart attacks. Sometimes we have a feeling in the chest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. It may be in the form of a verse of this nature, but in depth we could learn a lot. Brothers and sisters, look at what Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu regarding the tightening of the chest. If you want to be saved, 
If you want to have a chest that is not tightened, if you want to protect yourself from this type of stress and depression, he tells you in the next verse, subhanallah. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ You need to do two things. Declare the praise of your Rabb. Constantly declare, declare the praise of your Rabb. Your Lord, praise Him. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. All praise is due to Allah. Allah is my Lord. Allah is the one in whose hands lies absolutely every aspect of my existence and that of everyone else in existence. Amazing. So declare the praise of Allah. Always be happy with the situation Allah has placed you in by praising Allah. I praise Allah. I thank Allah. What do we say? Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. I praise Allah upon all conditions. That's what it is. Number one. Number two. Kum minas sajideen. Be from among those who are found prostrating. Read your salah, fulfill your prayer, take your time in prostration. It will help you, it will help your heart, it will help your chest, it will help your blood. It will save you from different types of diseases and stress and everything else. You fulfill that prayer and take your time for the sake of Allah in the early hours of the morning when no one knows that you have got up besides you and Allah. And then see how you feel. You feel so beautiful, you feel so good. Medication will never ever make you feel as good as that. You know why? Because Allah has promised you. Your maker is telling you the position that you are closest to me is when your head is on the ground. So take your time. When you go into sujood, just declare the praise of Allah. Do not be in a rush to come back up, but rather take your time. Be there. Repeat the praise of Allah as much as you can and come up without being in any rush. See what Allah does for you. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful way of saving ourselves from the difficulties of this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We move on to Surah An-Nahl. And in Surah An-Nahl, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah speaks about how important it is to ask when you don't know, when you don't have knowledge. Don't just jump to conclusions. Don't just be a self-taught person to the degree that what you have received and what you have is actually wrong because you didn't know how to answer the question. It is your duty and mine to read the Quran, to read its meaning, to try my best to understand it. Wherever a question arises, I need to look at what Allah says about that question. A lot of the verses in the Quran are quite simple to understand, but there will be verses that you don't understand in a rush. You may not know exactly what it means. You may not know why it's there. You might want to know in depth why exactly is this verse here, etc., etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 43 and 44 of Surah An-Nahl. فَاسْأَلُوا if you don't know, if you are unaware, if you'd like to know more about the revelation and the Psalms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, ask those who have sound knowledge. They will answer the question. Go to those who are trusted and who have knowledge to explain to you why is this? You might read verses in the Quran speaking about alcohol. You might not know what abrogation means. You will have to go and learn about it. It's not just going to come to your mind. Suddenly I'm going to sit at night and you know, Oh, perhaps an angel will come and explain to me what's going on. You will be a confused person and you will confuse others as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. For me, this is an absolutely important verse because a lot of us sometimes when we have a question, the first thing we do, we go to the most common sheikh. What's his name? Google. Exactly. We go to Google. And subhanallah, we don't even know whether we are doodling or Googling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. The reality is, even if you are to search the net, you need to know that the source that you are getting it from is legit. There are hundreds of thousands of fake websites that are there to lead you astray. How would you know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It's important to develop a link with someone you know firsthand. You can trust. You have seen, you have tested, you have tried, you've known for a while. Ask them. And at least tell them, look, I found this answer. Is it okay? Is it not okay? Otherwise, not only will you be confused, but you will actually be led astray, thinking that you are right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Ameen. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about the blessing of knowledge. You know, he tells us, oh man, I created you. When I made you, you couldn't even speak. You could not communicate, subhanallah. Imagine when I was born, when you were born, all of you, even the oldest from amongst us, subhanallah. When you were born, <laughs> what did you know? Besides the crying, subhanallah, the crying. Anything else? Did anyone, you know, hear that someone was born and as they came out, they said, Salam alaikum, everybody. That cannot happen. And it didn't happen. It happened perhaps. You might say, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. We don't want to forget that, but that is an exception. It's not what happens to you and I. So Allah says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah has taken you out of the wombs of your mothers when you did not know anything. You did not know anything at that time. Waja'ala lakum sam'a. Allah says he made for you your ears, your eyes, your hearts in order for you to show gratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. You know, man is such, he didn't even know how to speak. The minute he learns how to speak, he starts off with bad words. He uses the mouth to lie. He starts off doing that which is evil. And as he becomes educated to a certain extent, he starts arguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word of Allah, instead of wanting to learn, he starts arguing. There's a difference. If you don't understand something and you want to learn, you will be taught. But if you start arguing with the intention of presenting arguments, you don't want to learn. You just want to prove a point. Trust me, you can never ever you can never ever win an argument with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding of this faith. Of, of this faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of his desperation to see everyone being guided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw this and knew it. And Allah tells him, O oh, oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your duty is to convey the message. If they turn away, we want you to know for as long as you fulfill your duty of letting them know what was right and what was wrong, it is not against you. It is now against them. You did your duty. I do not have control over the people. You do not have control over the people, but you do have the ability to tell them Look, my brother, this is right. This is wrong. It's better for you to do this. Once you fulfill that, that is it. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have actually accomplished your duty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verse number 82 and 83, Allah says, If they are going to turn away, your duty was solely and only to clearly deliver the message. Tell them there is a hereafter. This is what will happen, etc., etc. Allah says they know the gifts of Allah upon them, but they are denying them. They know the gifts of Allah upon them. They know what Allah has blessed them with, but after that, they are denying the gifts of Allah. For many of them are ungrateful. May Allah protect us from ingratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. One might ask, what would I need to do in order for me to be leading a life of happiness and goodness in this world as well as the next? Quite simple. Allah explains it so many times in the Quran. But the problem with us, we don't know the meaning of contentment and happiness. People think contentment means I've got the best job. I'm earning so many million. I've got the biggest bungalow. I've got so many properties. I've got so many children, so many wives, etc., etc. Wow, that is happiness. No, not at all. Allah never ever said that happiness is equivalent to some materialistic amount. No way. Never. Happiness is connected to your heart and the condition of your mind and heart put together based on your iman and belief in Allah. That's what it is. If you are happy, even if you don't have anything in this world and you are living under a tree and you don't know where you're going to get the next meal from, you are convinced Allah will provide. 
and you are the happiest man, you come for salah and you take your time. You're not worried, subhanallah, because you know Allah is in charge. Allah is in control. It's not like I've been lazy. It's not like I've purposely asked for it, but I'm going through difficulty because Allah wanted it to happen. I'm trying my best. I know Allah will provide. That is contentment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man amila saliham min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min. Two conditions. Whoever does good deeds, male or female, not just male, whoever does good deeds, male or female, and they are believers in Allah, they worship Allah alone and they do good deeds. Allah says, We will grant them a beautiful life. We will give them a pure, good life. They will have a lovely life. Allah didn't say we will grant them the material items of this world. Not at all. If my brothers and sisters, materialism was a sign of success, even in the smallest way, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have owned the whole world and whatever it had because he's the best of creation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made sure that the lesson has to do with whoever is the winner, especially in the hereafter. If you have won, that is it. So Allah says, if you are good, you do good deeds and you believe in Allah properly, then you will have a very, very good life. And then we will grant them the recompense of the best of their deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Also a great warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the day of judgment. Every one of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it quite clear that on the day of judgment, you will be worried about yourself. You will forget your children. You will forget your family members, your wives, your mothers, whoever else, your best friends, everyone, your business associate. Everyone will be saying, oh, oh my, myself, myself. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? Allahu Akbar. So Allah says on that day, everyone will be defending himself or herself in a very strong way. Verse number 111 of Surah An-Nahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَن نَفْسِهَا On that day, every soul will come defending itself very strongly. Allah is going to ask you, you know, it's like a court case. You need to defend yourself. Why did you do this? And you're going to have to say, you know what? I did it because of this, because of that, because of that. Allah knows, but He's asking you to give you an opportunity so that you don't say, I was punished without even a case. I was punished without even being given an opportunity to clear my name. Allah says, okay, clear your name. Tell us, why did you do this? Allahu Akbar. May Allah make that day easy for us. Brothers and sisters, to be saved from the torment of that day, from the calamity of that day, and the difficulties of that day, keep on asking Allah to make that day easy for you and all of us. May Allah make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, pause for a moment. When you close your eyes, that will be a reality. The day you die, every day I receive messages on my phone, someone, someone passed away. May Allah grant them Jannah. The funeral will be at this time, the salah, the janazah prayer will be at this time, and this cemetery, etc., etc. Every day I receive a minimum of five of those. One day your name will be on it, and one day my name will be on it. Then what? People have forgotten already the list of how many were on there. All of you here have already forgotten if I tell you, write a list of 500 people who died. I'm sure there were thousands of people you will not be able to write more than 20 names. Unless you sit and you think and you help each other. Why? Because it shows you that what is significant is actually those who have won in the hereafter. As for those here in this dunya, you will be forgotten. No matter how much you have, you'll be forgotten. What will help you is your link with Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a powerful link with Him. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to keep on reminding one another. Because when I remind you, I'm getting a reward. When you remind someone else, you're getting a reward. If you're reminding someone else as a result of my reminder to you, we are both getting a reward. And this is why Muhammad sallallahu gets a full reward of everything that everyone does in terms of goodness because Allah chose him to spread that goodness to all of us. Amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when you are calling towards Allah, be careful how you call towards Allah. Do you know why? The method that you use, the approach that you have decided to use plays a big role 
in whether that message will impact upon the person you are speaking to. Very important. For example, if I look at a group of people and say, brothers and sisters, you haven't read your salah, you're going to hell, it's over, you guys are burning. And you know what? The fire is so hot, even in winter, you'll be able to feel the heat. You know what, my brother, you've just doomed everyone. Perhaps people started feeling that, you know what, as it is, I'm going to hell. There's no hope anyway. So I'd rather now go and do everything else there is to do because I've got no hope in the hereafter. Hang on. There is an approach. There is wisdom. There is tact. There is a style and a method to speak. You know, when you're eating a burger, for example, what is of essence? Isn't it the patty in the middle? Isn't it the little fillet in the middle, right? But what do they do? They put it, they slice some fresh bread and then they put some perhaps mayonnaise and perhaps a little bit of tomato sauce and they'll put some fresh salad and they might put some, you know, tomato, whatever else. They will put so many things and then they will sell it to you looking so good. It's dripping fine. But you know what? It was actually the fillet that you were interested in. That's why you say beef burger, chicken burger, whatever other burger, because you know, the main thing is the inside. That's it. But they beautified it so that it looks nice, it tastes nice, the marination and so on and so forth. And I ate it because I could eat it. If someone had just given you that little piece of fillet, unless you were a health fanatic, you wouldn't have really wanted to eat it just like that. That's an example I'm giving you in order to show you even when you talk to people, use a bit of wisdom. You want to tell him pray. You want to tell him fulfill your five daily salah. You want to tell someone to dress appropriately. So you see a sister, for example, not dressed appropriately. Instead of saying, Astaghfirullah, la quwwata illa billah. You're going to Jahannam, A'udhu billah, it's burning in hell. Ooh, my brother, my brother. Number one, what are you looking at, please? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May he guide us. You know, you can beautifully word it. You can get an opportunity. You need to show a connection between you and the people to make sure they understand and realize you are concerned about them. When you, when they feel that you are really concerned about them, they will be ready to take whatever you say. And you tell them, my brother, you know, I have weaknesses and I really do. And I am working on them. And if you notice anything in me, please tell me I'm just a human. I, I really don't know whether I'm going to Jannah or Jahannam. I have hope in the mercy of Allah and I'm trying. And I'd like you also to do the same. My sister or my brother, I noticed something. I want to raise it, not because I'm dooming you or cursing you, but because I really feel that perhaps it might help you by me saying this. And I'm not saying it because I feel I'm better than you, but I'm saying it because I feel it would be rewarding for me to be able to help you if I can. Why don't you consider X, Y, and Z? Haven't you chosen a good way of speaking? Why don't you consider this? Consider the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did I say? I said the same thing, but I worded it in a way that makes people want to listen to what you have to say. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us verse number 125 of Surah An-Nahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. What a powerful statement. It's only part of the verse. It is so powerful. Allah says, call towards the path of Allah with wisdom call towards the path of Allah with wisdom a lot of people have a lot of knowledge but they don't know how to get that across some people have a little bit of knowledge but the impact they have is so great because they have been given wisdom and Allah says whoever has been bestowed with wisdom has been given a lot of goodness that's what Allah says so this is why my brothers and sisters, as much as it is my duty to convey everything I know about the deen, it is also my duty to be careful how I convey. Sometimes the method I use can chase people further away from the deen, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should that happen? I would have been the cause. I'd rather look at people, greet people, talk to them, make them feel like we're all part of one family. And then inshallah, they, we will be able to help one another. So remember this wisdom is extremely important. Sometimes we learn things. And I know when I was a student, and I'm sure those who have studied the Dean would agree with me. When you're a student, you know, you're on a high in the sense that you feel like, you know, I'm going to go back to my community and I'm going to teach them and I'm going to tell them and they're doing this wrong and that wrong and this wrong and that wrong. And I'm going to make sure everything changes overnight. I tell you, there were thousands of others just like you who wanted to change situations overnight. They came back. They really couldn't do that. They needed to sit 
apply wisdom and tact slowly but surely get the message across one by one and see how over time you have a general movement towards improvement but you will never be able to guide people yourself because guidance is in the hands of Allah for you is the trial may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all may we be able to create a loving environment in our own homes so that when we talk to our children the same wisdom will want them to listen to us rather than run away from us wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk